He is a New Zealander. Okay. <laughs> but he is very, has been very magnanimous in, in defeat and been really... Uh, he also really caused a real problem because our, um, our driver who picks the, the international speakers up from the airport had to pick Heath up at half past nine on Saturday night, right in the middle of the rugby. So I had to pay that driver a little bit extra. Um, but thanks, Heath, for coming over. Heath, even though he's a New Zealander, he lives in London. And I really am excited to have him here today because as we've been doing quite a lot with Heath in terms of... Um, the House of Business Architecture, which he's going to touch on today. And um, yeah, please give a warm South African welcome to Heath Gascoigne. Okay. Uh, <laughs> actually, Miles, uh, before you probably come back, this here is for you, um, both for was a gift I was going to get as a, either congratulations or commiserations for the thing, but it is a congratulations. Well done. And, and thank you. If you guys don't know, Miles is a great host. So thank you very much and congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Okay. And yeah, Miles did say, I know it's a digital world now and um, maybe people don't have physical cards, business cards, but if you can rip up a piece of paper, put your name on it, well, later on we'll do a draw um, so you can give, give away that. Okay, so this will send this around if you can pop your card in or piece of paper. Yeah, going to be another one later on. Okay, now how do you work this? All right. So, okay, how has it been so far? Who's been the best speaker that you've seen? What? Well, uh, no. Um, what have you learned so far? Let's. I will make this slightly interactive before we get into it. Who is? Um, what's the themes? I think we've seen roles has come up. What else have we seen? There's something about um, um, Ubuntu, Ubuntu, um, U B U N T O, U. Okay, I like that one. In, in New Zealand, well, in New Zealand, we actually have a we talk about this um, uh, African proverb: if you want to go fast, go f um, going to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together, go as a team. So um, you know that's for New Zealanders to to quote South Africans or African quote. Um, quotes, that's, that's pretty strong. Um, so we're going to touch on definitely um, roles today, um, definitely about teamwork. I know I'm here supposed to be talking about business architecture and business transformation, but we're not going to talk about business transformation. I'm um, sorry, business architecture. We're going to talk about something slightly different. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a personal story um, about how, we, how I got to this point here, how this book came about. Um, so I am a, um, a business architect. I do business transformation for a living. Um, I am, Miles knows, that I am in the middle of a project right now and flew in and, um, on Saturday night in the middle of the game and now I'll go tonight because I'm in the middle of a project. So I do business transformation, business architecture for a living. Um, and this book here came about as a reluctant, I didn't want to publish this book, but I was a little bit disappointed and frustrated going into these big transformation projects that seem to last for years, will go on for forever and spend copious amounts of money, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of pounds, and deliver absolutely nothing. And I get in there and it's the same thing every time. There's schools and schools of consultants and they're busy being busy, but not delivering. And so I come in there and I get called, my name, my name, I would get called in the middle of this, um, in these transformations, and when I'd walk in, there would be a target on my back because they knew what I was there for. I was there to clean up the transformation. I wasn't going to go there and um, tell anyone off or find out what's missing, fill in the gaps. And uh, so I reluctantly published that book after 15 years as a business architect getting called into these transformation projects. Now, that book has gone on, been used around the world, used by hundreds of companies and thousands of practitioners. But that wasn't the original book. The original book was that book. That book there is intentionally uh, in that style. I had to, it all ready to go, but I was warned not to publish that book. It was intentionally in a camouflage um, design because it was like I was going into battle every time I was going into these transformation projects. But that book never made it to publish. 
I was warned never to publish that book. I was warned by my colleagues and my professional friends and peers that if I publish that book, I will never get another day's work in the industry again. And I said, why is that? It's because you will tell the tell-all about what's going on in the industry, that these projects go for years and years and years and don't deliver. And now that's okay, but for me being now a British citizen and working on these large government transformation projects, this was taxpayers' money. And I was feeling, even though I wasn't a British citizen at the time, I was like, this is waste of time, money and resources. And if you're a taxpayer, your money as well. And I was like, so that book there, unfortunately, never made it to market. I did the other book. I wrote about what I did on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's the result of what's happened with it now. It's become a bestseller, um, six times bestseller on Amazon, sold all around the world. And now we have a training program and partner program and all of that. Okay. So why am I telling you that? We'll get to it in a second. Now, who am I? This is what we're going to cover. Who am I? The problem, the information lazy age, the broken business model, the business architect is dead, sadly, and introducing the business transformator and the solution. And if we've got time, Q&A. Okay, so first of all, this is actually a trick. It's not about me, it's about you. So I want to understand so that I can make my responses uh, applicable to where you are in your transformation, your career, where you are, what are you doing? So let's have a show of hands to see who's done at least one transformation. Okay, pretty much almost all of us. Okay, of those transformations, are they multiple countries? Okay, some, all right, so then the rest are local. Uh, how many years have you been doing it? Or how many, how many stakeholders on your project team? At least 20? Okay, so these are large transformations. How about 50, including the business users? Okay. Um, and would you consider yourself from the business side of the transformation? Okay, and then if you're from the technology side. Okay, so we've got a 50-50 split here. Great. Okay, you do both. All right, good stuff. Okay, and if you've not worked for the big four, Okay, and if you have worked for the big four, all right, okay, so then we've got internal transformation people, or we've got external, they, or either you work for other clients, you don't work on your own company, within your own company. No, okay, so externals, all right, all right. Okay, so we've got a mixture of uh, seasoned professionals here. So last two questions, five years experience on transformations? 10 years experience, 20 years experience. So we've got the gurus in the front row. All right, okay. So we've got some experience here, fantastic. So I want to cover the basic concepts then. Okay, the problem. Does this work? All right, okay. So the reason why I wrote the book is that I wanted to challenge the status quo. That 70% of the, have you would have heard it, some few speakers said today or yesterday, that these projects have a terrible success rate 70% of these transformation projects end in failure. Have anyone had any experience with that? Or all their projects are run on time, on budget, on scope? Okay. All right. Now, the other problem that no one wants to talk about is that the clients don't have a problem with the ideas to change. They have a problem with implementing the change. Yeah? If you want to solve the problem, where's the best place to go? To the person doing the work. Yeah? The person on the ground in operations. It's not a hard question. The question is implementation. And the last one is that no one wants to talk about is that clients are scared of consultants. They're scared because they've learnt over the years that these projects go on and on and on and never end. And so they, they, they are subconsciously then scared of the transformation because they know what it's going to be. It's a money sucking hole that they're going to go on for years and get nothing. So that's the reason why I wrote this book, is because I was annoyed with what I saw. So I thought, I'm going to publish what I, I um, have been doing for the last 15 years on these big transformations, getting called in to fix them up. So that, for the first one there, with um, the industry is broken, there is, um, you can learn a lot from sport for, with business. There is a, a famous coach, maybe in America it's a famous coach, um, Kevin Kelly. Do you know Kevin Kelly? Coach Kevin Kelly, he's um, 
um, a Texan uh, university coach is uh, from, um, famous for never punting on the fourth down, which was the dumb thing. He looked at the stats and he saw that the stats didn't marry up, so he decided that never, almost never, um, punt on the fourth down. And he turned his um, uh, his uh, uh, college into 90% winning streak, winning winning five national championships. And he he looked at the stats and he did he what he did, he challenged the status quo. And that's what I want us to do is to is to challenge the status quo, not to accept the 70% failure rate and how things are done around here. There is a better way. Now, how do I scroll up this thing? All right. Okay. Sorry. Okay, the lazy, the information lazy age. Okay, who knows about this? We live in the era of um, copious amounts of information. We have the world's smartest machine in our pocket. People want, and particularly clients, they are lazy now. They want everything done for you. They want to be sitting on the transformation ship, the journey, clean sailing, feet up, doing no work. You know, they want it all done for them, right? Just like we want everything done for us now. So, But that's created a problem. But it's, is it their fault? No, it, yeah, it's a symptom of this environment now. So who is, whose job is it then to challenge that status quo? Us, exactly. Our job. So, oh, it's going to be right ahead here. So what does the, uh, this is what the client actually wants. They want help with their transformation. And this is what they're actually getting. Yeah, they're getting a massive bill and no transformation. Yeah. It's not like there isn't um, good frameworks, good methods, lots of experience in this room, but why are they failing? They, this is the broken business model. Okay, if you guys don't know this, what are the clients good at doing? Their business. What are they not good at doing? Changing their business. So what do they usually do? They don't have the expertise in the house, so what do they do? They bring them in. Yeah? Who do they bring in? Consultants. Yeah? So there are three kinds of three types of consultants in the in the professional consultants. Do you know what they are? Well, <laughs> they get they are yes. Well, they're getting more expensive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's the finders, miners, and grinders. Yeah. The grinders are the doers. They do the work. They're the specialists. They're the ones that they can. They're good at one thing: the process mapping, requirements gathering. But you try to get them to do something else, they're like a fish out of the water. Okay? Then you have the minders. The minders mind the grinders. The minders only just got past rote learning. So just starting to think for themselves. And then you've got the finders. The finders are the guys, they are they're the ones that know the the uh, friends in high places. They're the ones that get them the work in the in their friends' business. They're the guys they can talk the talk, but they can't walk the walk. Anyone in this room like that? <laughs> no, but you know the guys, right? You know the guys. They turn up on the last day of the, of the code, on the contract, change one word in the presentation, then present it as their own, take all the credit. Yep. Okay. That's the old business model. Everyone's familiar with that business model? Okay. Remember when I said from the beginning about the status quo and status quo? Yeah. This is whose job is that then? If no one else is doing it, we're the experts and we're getting called into doing it. Yeah. And we talked about these other things of playing roles and the 5%, I think Stephen talked about. You know, we've got to assume a, uh, maybe a persona and act in a different way for the context. Yeah. So maybe this, we've got to look at that. There is, do you guys know the four reasons or four causes of transformation failure? Any guesses? This is not my research. Well, that would probably be part of it. First one is lack of business user involvement. We'll come back to these later. We have lack of senior leadership support.
changing requirements and incomplete requirements. Now, can you see a little pattern there? What are they all to do with? Exactly. And what have they got nothing to do with? Systems and technology. Yeah. So a lot of people like to point the finger at technology and say that's the problem. I'm a bit guilty of that sometimes. It's an easy get because you can just blame the technology guys for not delivering. But is it their problem? Is it their fault? Maybe it was the requirements. You know, so this is all the, the problem of transformation failure isn't to do with anything other than people. It's a psychological one. And I get guys that will call me up and say, Heath, I'm reading your book, mate. I love it. I'm, I'm trying to apply it word for word. And I say, great, thank you very much for getting the book. Really appreciate it. But just one caution there. Little word over here. It says framework. Framework means one thing, that you do two, well, two things with it. You apply it appropriately and proportionately for the context. And so too, when you talk about the finder, minder, and grinder, where would you think they would be if they said to pick up the book and want to apply the book to the letter? So be more at the grinder level, right? Yeah, you've got to learn to step up from there and think for yourself. Understand the context you're dealing in and then apply the appropriate tools. Like I tell guys, oh, they go, oh, Heath, you should talk to the founders of SAFE and integrate it with that. I said, look, guys, you're more than welcome to introduce any tools, techniques, methodologies that you like into your transformation on one basis. You do two things. You ask how does it make your, why are you doing it in the first place, and does it make your transformation go any faster? Because what you'll find is they go, I want to bring in the SWAT and the five W's and the da 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 It's like, you know what? You've just now added another deliverable that you've got to circulate, get drafted, approved, commented on, second version, off to a search solution design, business design, technology design board, all for little or no value. And what does that do to the timeline? It moves it to the right. Yeah. So what's happened with our 70% failure rate? It stays there. And so think about what you're doing. That's the context. Like I could come up here and say, guys, business transformation, business architecture, use my book, goodbye. And like, no, you've got to think for yourself. There is a truckload of fantastic tools and techniques out there. You have to use your, your mind, your brain, and think about the context and apply it appropriately. So it's not supposed to be a sermon. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so the, the client the client doesn't know what type of consultant they want or need. They don't know about this concept of finder, mind, and grinder. They just know they have a problem and they need it solved. Hence why going to you. Now. All right. This the business architect is dead. Now, I'm a business architect. And even to say that hurts. And it, I going in, I'm going in now, it's getting embarrassing. I'm going into clients and to projects and I say, Heath, you can't use that word anymore. I said, what's that? Business architect. I said, why is that? Because it's got a bad name. It's got a bad taste in the, in the business's mouth. I said, why? I said, because of previous engagement. They just went on and on forever, delivered these interesting presentations, what I call market teacher. Like business architecture, market teacher. It's interesting, but useless. And it's, it, the purpose is, Marketing. It is marketing to get more work. It's not marketing to deliver any outcomes. And so I'm going in now and say, you're a service designer. I'm going, service designer, what does that mean? It has the connotations of design in there. Yes, business architect does part design, but it's not only design. They can't do these designs without collaborating with the rest of the organization. So this old school of business architect, which it used to be, is you create these beautiful designs, and they call them target operating models, and lob them over the fence to the business and say, there you go. And if you know the consulting model that goes, they'll leave the project. A few months later, the client calls and says, well, you know, it's, it's broken. It's not working anymore. And the, client, the consultant says, well, it was working when it gave it to you. Yeah, you guys know, you remember that? You would have seen it? Yeah, something was delivered, looked good at the time. And why it worked is because the consultant was still there. It was never designed to work without them. Yeah, so if we're doing real transformation, where someone talked about it yesterday, is about embedding that change, right? And the change happens and stays and embeds and then continuously improve after the consultant is gone. Okay, so you have to build it so that you can build it without you. Okay, so, yes, this, this um, 
business architect is now called the service designer, which I struggle with. Um, that means that the business architect, sadly, it does have that connotations of design, which the business architect does do, but it's missing a few things. It's missing the other roles that we do. Part strategist, we help the organisation with the direction. Part collaborator, because you can't get anything done in a silo. We talked about that. One of the speakers talked about yesterday about silos and breaking those down, the orchestration. Um, and you can't do that without negotiating. You have to agree the priorities of your different colleagues across the organisation and, and, and trade-offs. Yeah, so, so that's where... I'll come back to the slide in a minute. That's where the business transformator was born. That's part designer, part strategist, part collaborator, and part negotiator, because that is the role of the business transformator. And so if you've ever come up with a design to implement your organization's target operating model, that you needed to work with the technology side to implement that target, target operating model, then you're probably a business transformator. Okay, so... Yes, this business transformator is that part strategist, part designer. What has happened is that, as I was saying, that the consultants have been bamboozled the clients with market texture, the interesting documentation. And this is what, when you go in there and you see 200 consultants on a transformation program and creating reams of interesting documentation and going nowhere, that is called market texture. Yeah, it is interesting, but some would say not very useful. I'll tell it how it is. It's interesting, but useless. You know, you've got to get away from that. If it's not moving you closer towards a the transformation, then you've got to ask the question, why are you doing it? You know? No one's ever done that, right? When we go and deliver, we deliver for results, the outcomes. Yep. Okay, good work. Okay, you're following along so far? Yep. Okay. So this is not about you, right? This is about you. You can have all the tools in the world you guys are you know, the best. I'm honoured and flattered to speak in front of you guys because you guys are the leaders. You guys are taking time out of your own day to learn something from guys like this, which I wanted to learn when I was when I wrote my book. I was looking for the book I wanted to read, and then I couldn't see it, so I ended up writing it. And I'm probably sure that you guys in here got a book in you too. So if you ever feel like doing it, I highly recommend you put pen to paper, lock yourself away, and knock it out. Because my framework came about from 15 years of doing this. Not that I had a framework in my head. I was just as you go along, you learn. And you apply, and we talked about that yesterday, about applying, reflection, application. But well, I have a training course, Miles knows about this. We talk about this is a, not a knowledge acquisition course, it's an application course. You need to apply what you learn. There's no good acquisition acquiring this knowledge and doing nothing with it. You know, say knowledge is power, knowledge is not power. The application of the knowledge is power. You need to apply that. Like you guys will come here today and you'll pick up all this, this stuff. It's great, but you know, they talk about you know, the retention of what you learn versus what you'll actually apply is you know, pretty low. The, the odds are in your favour. But that's the challenge, and that's where the leadership comes, is that you take this stuff and you apply it. You probably won't apply it like I, the guys call me up and say, Heath, I'm apply it by the, by the letter. You probably won't apply it by the letter, which is fine. You know, you're applying it for the context where you are. But the, the thing is, you are applying it. And if you continue doing what you're doing currently, where's it going to end? The same place it's ending now. 70% failure. So something needs to change, right? Yes or no? Okay. All right. Okay. I managed to whip through that pretty fast. <laughs> Good one. All right. Where is the bucket? Where is the... Oh, it's still going. Okay. Yeah, you, you think so? <laughs> okay, there was a slide here that I, I want to come back to. So this is when you know that the business architecture is dead, is that if you don't know, in, the, in an organisation you've got the three L's. Who's heard of the three L's? Yeah, layers, language, and level. So each layer of the organisation, strategic, operations and implementation, those layers have a different language. The guys at the top interested in market share, equity return, guys in the middle, days off, 
how many widgets are pushing through the product, the, what the turnover rate is, the guys at the bottom, implementation, business requirements document. We talked about that yesterday, the very detailed stuff. So the next one, level. At each different layer, they have a different level of detail. Yeah? So you know when you're in trouble with business architecture. Oh, thank you very much. Well, there's a fair few there. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Can you, thank you. You know when you're in trouble when you go into a client, and I won't mention any clients' names here. Um, I think we talked, I think Miles was saying that some of the presentations couldn't be available because they're getting sanitized and taking out some um, private information. Um, look, I have guys on my course to say, look, when we talk about your issues, we're not interested in the name of your client. We're interested in the problem you're trying to solve. Um, so, yeah, the, on this particular client, um, we're talking about the three hours when you know the business architecture is dead, when you don't understand the layers, the language, and the levels, is that the business design team, who's responsible for all the transformation in the organization, had decided on their own that they're going to adopt BPMN process modeling notation for all the process mapping in the organization. Now, this just happened to be a health regulation products um, organization. So not a Toyota pushing through lots of widgets through the assembly line to need business process modeling notation. But they decided that they're going to adopt the standard. So I said to my colleague, I said, so how's it working with the business now? I said, oh, it's no good. I said, why is that? He goes, well, because when we go, they come to us for projects, they run away. Oh, thanks, Bixon. They, they run away. I said, why do they run away? Oh, because we told them to go off to a two-day course to do business process modeling notation. I said, what did you do that for? I said, because we adopted that standard. I said, but do they understand it? No. So why did you do it? And he said, well, because we adopted the standard. I said, so basically, let me understand. Like, you speak, they speak good English. It's a language they use for communication, and it works. They can clearly understand each other, but you decided you want to teach them French. But that's not any French. You want to make them fluent in French. And it says, yeah. I said, that's, you know what the problem is? Their language is fine, and it works perfectly fine, and they don't want to learn French. What needs to happen is that you need to get better at English. And he's like, he's like no, but we adopted the standard. I was going, mate, and the, these projects and that organization just keep spinning around. The business gets this harder. You know the problem with that is? Not only it is a waste of time, money, and resources, that there's no innovation. There's no change. And then what happens then? Their customers leave, and then the, the, they can't attract, the, they lose money to the competitors. They can't attract talent. They can't attract talent. They can't grow. And then who ultimately, in this case, the government, who ultimately suffers? The, the, the customer and the, organ, the, the country. And why did it happen? Let's talk about systemic risk or systemic um, systems thinking, the knock and cause on effect. All would happen for us in this role as business transformators. And so, so you know it's broken when you don't speak the language. So the responsibility comes on us that we need to get better. The understanding we guys talked about yesterday, about the context, understanding your stakeholders, understanding who they are and meeting them where they are. You don't go, I'm not going to go to the CEO and say, hey, buddy, let's start talking about this um, technical design. And he's going, what? One of, the, one of the girls talked about it yesterday, about I've got five seconds, give me the high level. You, know, you understand where they are. And that talks about if you need to, was it Stephen talked about the 5%. You know, you may be, you know, um, uh, in terms of Myers-Briggs, you might be a ENTJ and quite introverted, but then you know you need to step up. Then that's the onus on you. Then you step up. When I did my MBA, we, sat, we, we lined each other up against an exercise from the Myers-Briggs and said, who's the most extreme and who is the least extreme? So ENTJ was right at the top and really um, introverted down the, down the side. And one of my friends, who is the most extroverted person that you can imagine, and I, I, when I did this, you know, I, I came from, kind of come from New Zealand, as, as Miles was saying, and I, I, you know, I, I left New Zealand with no education, did all my um, post-grad and master's in, in Aussie then for the UK. And I, my, my eyes were open when I got to Australia. And I, when I did this MBA, I thought, I want to do this so I can meet some really cool people. I want to, and I, you paid a fortune, but you go, okay, but I, it's about the network, the people you're around. And this, this one guy is the guy that I want, when I started this MBA, I picked him, I said, that's the guy I did this MBA for. This guy's amazing. And then he was down the far end 
of this introverted spectrum. And I was going, dude, you're supposed to be here. And he goes, no, nah, man, this is how I, that's how I have to behave in front of you guys. But my preference, I'm really quiet, and I don't like to keep to myself. And so like, there's a guy that classically lives at 5%, right? And he's an he's a absolute gun. I think, I want to be like that guy. And so this is what we need to do. This is the takeaway, is that you know, you, the power is in your guys' hands. If our role is to be you know, the business transformators and, and take the organization from the pain where they are into the, the future they want, and they rely on us and they call on us to do this transformation, and if it, that's our goal, is to lead these, these clients through this transformation, and the onus is on us, we know the problems of the finders, miners, and grinders and the market texture, you know, what is working, what is not working, thinking for ourselves, picking up all the, the frameworks that you need, only apply them if it does two things, Make, you know the reason why you're doing it, and it adds value, then absolutely do it. But if it's not, you're just going to waste time and money, and ultimately the knock-on effect is to the, if you're, like um, one of the girls said yesterday, like your words are power. You know, you can inspire an organization or a, 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 a department or an organization and even the nation. So like as in South Africa with the World Cup, you know, how good is that now for the country? From one game. It's amazing. It's like, what was one company do? The, the company, the knock-on effects to the rest, and where's it come back to? Us. So that, that's responsibility is on us. So if our role is to add that value, then let that be the goal for all of us if we're in this auditorium to do that. Okay, thank you. Now, the floor. The lucky drip. Dip. Okay, clearly I'm not looking at them. Well, mixing them up. Oh, maybe that's the sign. Okay, that's the sign. Here we go. I'm going to butcher this name. Oh, no, Solomon. Solomon Mayo. Hey, Solomon, come on up, mate. Pleasure. I'll see you later on, man. Yes, pleasure. Hey, you're welcome. My pleasure. Have, has anyone seen, it's an old movie now, probably showing my age, um, Wall Street 2. Can you remember Wall Street 2? And what's his, um, at the end, when he asked him questions, he said, I know the future. And he goes, oh, tell me. And there's another book here. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, I know everything, the future, like here we're in business, the, the future of business conference, right? Do you want to know the future of business? You know, I've got the answer for you. Read my book. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a download code there. Um, Future of Business, you go on it for free, the ebook version. Um, you got to, whatever you do, don't download it on your phone. Okay? Get the code, download it later. It'll be active for a week or two. Um, it might not be even active now, but um, give it a week or two. But download it on your laptop, because if it downloads on your phone, it's too big and it goes off into the ether. And it, remembers your IP address. So when you try it again, it says you've downloaded it. So don't download it on your phone. Okay? So just copy that. All right. Any Q&A? Any questions? Now you learned enough. You know the onus is on you. You have the power. That was the start. Was it? With great power comes great responsibility. Yeah? So use all the tools you've got. But at the end of the day, it's up to you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Heath. Um, yeah, just so I really, really encourage you to download that book. And as he says, it is a big, as you can see from the thickness here. And we'll we'll draw later on for a, another book. For any of you that do get the book today, uh, Heath will gladly autograph it for you as well. Okay, even with his left hand. Um, and the other thing that I would recommend with uh, Heath is there is a there is a course that he does, but I'm telling you right now it is tough because he says it is an application course and not a knowledge gathering course. There's a couple of people in this room that have done it, including myself. It's really, really worthwhile. Um, and he's gone, so I'm going to offer on his behalf, and I'm sure we can get you a discounted code for that as well, okay? 
Um, but yeah, thank you, Heath. Uh, really, really good uh, to hear.